Well, I'm starting to get on back on the Galaxy, starting to get to the convertible top frame stuff now. Well, I filled the little holes with some Marine Tex. This is what the Marine Tex is the stuff right here. It works great. This is the catalyst. It's a two part. So one part, or well, you put in, um, I don't know how to word it, like one part of this, or five parts of this to one part of this, five parts of that, one part of that, I think is what the, what I remember. That's what I mixed, and I just use one stick to get it out of there, and then I use the other stick to take the hardener and mix it so I don't want to get this in there or that you know either one contaminate either one and this stuff will harden up probably in an hour so it gives you a little bit of work time the marine tex is excellent for repairing cracked steering wheels so I did get the bumper brackets out and painted they're bead blasted painted up they came out pretty good I painted them with uh, Rust-Oleum, you see a little, there does that show up, a little stamping on it, but they, they bead blasted up really easy, and I primed them, I'll show you what I primed them, painted them with the same stuff basically as the chassis, except this was out of a spray can instead of uh, spraying it out of my gun. That's what I primed and painted the bumper brackets with. All right, I'm going to sand on this today. I thought as long as I was marine texting in those holes, this marine tex is really super hard, really super strong. Bonds really well. It's going to be a pain to sand. It's harder to sand. But there are some pits, just a few little pits, especially right in here. So I just thought I'd fill them in somewhat. They don't need to be perfect. You're not going to see any of this as the fabric will fold down, staple, glue, the weather stripping here so none of this surface will really be visible once the, the frame is on the car and especially when the top is up when the top is down if the boot isn't on you might see just a little bit here and a little bit here but this will look nice and uh, I think it'll look fine it'll look better than if I just painted it with the pits so I'm going to get to sanding on that right now and seeing I do repair things like this, I uh, got the carburetor, got the gas tank off and cleaned out. The carburetor is all cleaned. The primer bulb was rotten, and I just don't happen to have another one, so I'll have to go to the mower shop. Needs an air cleaner anyway. But yeah, you can see pressure washing these things before you work on them keeps it from getting as dirty that's for sure you know it takes a few minutes to to clean it up and it's worth it so that is ready to get the parts and put together the carburetor is all nice and clean I think this is ready for prime I there's a few little pits right there in the front header and I wanted this front header to be smooth no burrs no nothing all the way across. This is what's really messed up on the Galaxy right now is this header. So that's pretty good. There's a few little pits I fixed in there. This side really didn't need anything. I'm going to call it ready for uh, zinc chromate primer. Prime it up right now. Well as far as I'm concerned that is ready for paint. Started on the top frame and the tacking strip. This one's actually, uh, that channel's okay. I'm going to remove all this stuff and clean it. There's screws right there, but this is one of the screws from the other side. They're both kind of broken off there, and I don't have a tap that size, so i got to run to the store. But let me uh, show you the other side here. This side, the screws came out. The screw was was there and there was one here too there was not one in that hole but there was one in that hole but um 
I think um, for the most part and you can see where the screws are that hold the frame to the car so that that's like tacking strip material and I'll, I'll replace all that and uh, but I want to take it all out so I can sand this out in here and paint in there but I think uh, I'm gonna get something so I can tap those holes out and then I'll get the cleaning so let me uh, see if I can locate a tap somewhere for this size I ended up having to go to the hardware to get a tap to make sure all these holes were, um, you know, all the threads were good. So I went and ran the tap through all the holes. It's a 632 tap. And I have a feeling these ones I'm going to have to drill. I was going to heat them, but yeah, I don't know. How, I might try and put the top down partially and then heat them because heat will definitely you know I can grip these with a pair of vice grips they just don't turn they're they're definitely rusted in there so I might try and uh heat it and then uh get it out yeah along with busting busted tap that was missing I broke that one drill bit when I was drilling those screws out as you saw and I resharpened it and it's just a little short of what it originally was it still worked but um I bought a new drill bit too to replace a broken one. I try and keep my drills and taps, you know, when I bust them, I try and replace them. So when I need them, I got them. Like I needed the 632. It had been busted a long time ago. I never replaced it, so I had to go chasing for one. But that's why I try and, you know, so I don't have to chase for things. To do this, I'm going to use my small, smallest brazing tip, not my cutting tip. So I can just heat the little area up there where I'm going to um, uh, be working. So just use a tiny little flame. That looks like a nice little flame. And we'll just heat. Just that, whoops, that's why I put all kinds of cardboard there. This rust will pop as it breaks free. Let's see if that's hot enough to undo. There we go. Let's see if we can get the other one out. Might have been enough heat there to get this one out. Nope. And that one's not enough, I don't think, to grab onto it. Now let me clean that up a little bit with a screwdriver and we'll have a further look at it. I'm just going to heat it a little bit more to see if some of that slag around there will dissipate, the rust slag, and allow me to grip that and turn that screw out. That, then we'll be drilling it. Well, that thing's cherry red. Let's see what happens here. It's turning out. There we go. Got them both out. All right, I'll clean that up and run a tap through the holes. That'll clean up easier now that I've heated it up too because it gets all that frozen stuff up that makes it difficult to clean, you know, the, the layers of rust as I call it. But anyway, that I can run a tap through, no problem.
that will make it nice to put new tacking strips in to have all this tapped out. The screws will go right in. There we go. Whoops, a little burr or something there. Caps all up on. Probably should put oil on the threads. There we go. All tapped out. All right, I went around and scraped all the loose scaly rust out of the screwdriver. Just took it and tapped it with a hammer lightly to uh, kind of make sure. I, this is the worst. Broke all the uh, rust free. Yeah, I could take these two screws out here and take this rib off, which I might do to uh, clean it and paint it. But I've just been leaving, it, leaving these on to keep the frame and this moving evenly as I need to run it up and down. But I cleaned all the... Uh, foam that was still on there. I'll take some solvent and clean that adhesive off and I got to get this take these nuts off get this weather strip off and I can start sanding the frame out. Um, but I got a present today and I think we're gonna open it up sitting right there. This is what we got here. These are the rear aluminum moldings. These things are really really nice. Yeah, they're, they're flawless. They really, really look good. They'll look good on the car. These are the front ones and these are heavier because they're stainless steel or not aluminum. And uh, I'm gonna save the, I'm gonna save the box that these came in because I'm going to put the original ones, I'm going to straighten them up and get them re-anodized. Eventually I'll get them re-anodized, but I'm going to straighten them up in the, maybe over the winter. Not now, obviously, but over the winter I'll straighten them and uh, look into getting them redone and sell them to recoup the cost of these. These were not cheap by any means, but... They needed to be replaced. I mean, the original ones wouldn't do the car justice having dinged up trim around there. Can't have that. By the way, these were extremely well packed. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're from Bruce Miller. And uh, I'm putting them back in the box because, you know, I got a little bit to do before I'm ready to put them on. I got the rocker panel moldings right here and I gotta go through and polish them and repaint the black and you know I'll get all that on at the same time I'll put the moldings all the body stuff it'll be a while. I want to get focus on the convertible top right now yeah there's the original ones so yeah at least I got them so when I get ready to put them on they're ready to go on which I need to find new uh, screws the original screws these are the original screws and there's two different style of screw here I think this one's like the original and that one there might be a replacement but because the majority of them well I'll go by what's the majority of but there's little tiny Maybe these smaller ones are the correct ones, but these won't do those new moldings justice, so I'm going to hunt up a new set of screws for the trim. I just sanded all this just to make sure there's no sharp edges there. This is There's like a pad that goes on here before the top goes on, you know, it kind of goes across and... Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that nothing was going to get torn. So because that's lip, see how there's a lip there or curved over? See how it's kind of disappeared there? I mean, I might take this off the car and run a bead of weld down here on each side and 
grind it out to kind of mimic what was there, but I'm also thinking it's not worth it. I don't think it'd be worth it. I don't think that's gonna cause any issues. And I did get the last of the weather strip off on both sides. I think I'm gonna call it a day on the car. I got some things around the house to do, but I got, these are all bumper mounting bolts and I got a bead blast them and paint them. So maybe I'll work on them a little bit today between things I got to do around the house and uh, and get this thing. I think I'm going to back the car out to sand and I can just blow everything off with compressed air as I do and uh, you know save making too much of a mess in the car. Got all the bumper bolts blasted and painted. So this too, they're the front bumper bolts. Yep, lots of stuff hanging. So anyway, I'm going to call it a day on the car anyway. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button. It certainly helps. And if you want to, um, if you like my channel, want to subscribe to it, hit that 348 engine icon. And thank you for watching my videos.